also in your thesis. So you have done in the methodology you describe your sample, your survey, who you surveyed, uh, which scales you used, or which data you used, uh, which analysis met <coughs> sorry, method uh, you applied, regression, analysis of variance, uh, or correlation analysis. So, so again, all this you will learn in special seminars. Uh, and the next chapter is the results section. The results section. In the results section, you put the results coming from your statistical analysis, namely the regression coefficients, the structural equation modeling or SEM coefficients, the significance levels of your hypothesis testing. So you can do that by showing in a graphical way the results coming out, for example, your structural equa equation modeling, or by putting tables with the regression coefficients and with the significance levels. We will see some examples in some instances. Do not comment, because this is done in the discussion of the results section. So do not comment, just describe and show, according to your hypothesis, the significance levels if you reject or if you accept your hypothesis formulated in your conceptual model. So I would recommend to do that chronologically. Uh, you show the results for hypothesis 1 and the significance level, hypothesis 2, 3, 4, and so on. So you put there uh, clearly only the results, uh, the, the descriptive results of your statistic, statistical analysis, and you satisfy yourself by giving uh, the reject or the acceptance of the hypothesis. We will see now some examples to make it clearer to you. Here is our example one about the impact of social capital of Facebook on happiness and well-being. So in line with our hypothesis, we see the independent variable intimacy in the network impacts highly significantly at the 001 level bonding social capital. And also in line with our hypothesis, it impacts negatively at a 001 level, highly significantly bonding bridging, bridging capital. So this is in line with hypothesis one. We accept hypothesis one. We see that network size also in, uh, in, uh, impacts positively and highly significantly bonding social capital and uh, also bonding bridge, bridging social capital. So we accept hypothesis two, both at a highly significant level. We see that the median variables, bonding capital and bridging capital, have, in line with our hypothesis three and four, a positive and highly significant impact on happiness. Both sides, uh, the impact of bridging social capital is stronger than the one of bonding capital. That is, stronger relationships, closer relationships, impact more positively happiness than lose relationships. Uh, in contrast to our hypothesis 5, we reject this hypothesis 5 because the link of bonding uh, capital on Facebook impact on well-being is non-significant, so we reject hypothesis 5. And finally, uh, we accept hypothesis uh, 6, uh, namely bridging social capital has a highly uh, significant impact at the 001 level on Facebook impact on well-being. And lastly, uh, we see uh, at a 005 level, uh, hypothesis 7, happiness has a positive impact on Facebook impact uh, on well-being. So this is a graphical representation of our results and you see chronologically we deal with different hypotheses and we accept or reject them according to the significance levels. Let's see example number two about the IoT and smart connected objects acceptance. You see here also the confidence intervals. And so most of our relationships are highly significant at uh, 0 0.001 level or uh, significant at the 005 level. Uh, for example, utilitarian value is highly positively significant as we expected in H1 on PU. And uh, we can see also passive usefulness uh, passive of use has also a highly significant positive impact on usefulness. And it's the same for social value as the regression coefficient is positive 
uh, and highly significant. We see that in line with our hypothesis, it's slightly significant privacy concerns have a negative impact on trust, technology trust, and, uh, but on the other hand, technology trust is highly significant and positive impact on well-being. Uh, so until now, all our hypotheses are confirmed. We confirm furthermore that well-being is a mediating variable because the higher the well-being, the higher the impact on intention to use. This impact is moderated highly by the quantified self, uh, so which means that indeed the more people are concerned by measuring, monitoring their life with smart connected objects, the higher will be also the impact of well-being on intention of use. Well-being has also a direct positive and highly significant impact on recommendations or word of mouth to recommend a smart connected object. And last but not least, we confirm also a positive, highly significant relationship between intention to use and word of mouth. We have here some moderators that we test. We also see here that technology trust is a moderator between utilitarian value, that is the, that we communicate with others and perceived usefulness. And so you see indeed, if we have high trust, uh, the perceived usefulness is higher. And this is what you can see in these lines. And this lower line, these are people with low trust, they, so they perceive lower usefulness. And this, this is important. And so the more people trust into technologies, they more also will perceive the benefits of the technology. In line of our hypothesis, and this is all confirmed. You can see uh, this is what we found also in literature. Also what you can see when I put here a reference, these, for example, Novak and Hoffman uh, showed that actually uh, our link uh, the link we test also is positive, or Hong and Tong show that privacy concerns have negative impact on trust. And so we confirm all our hypotheses, and, this, and we see indeed innovativeness has a positive impact on the link between perceived usefulness and perceived views on use. So you can see, once if the more the consumer is innovative, open to new technology, uh, the higher will also be the usage of the technology. On the other hand, the lower the innovativeness is, the lower will also be uh, the usage. Uh, so there again, we are in line with literature, with Rogers, 1983. Here are the results for the smart home study, where we test the acceptance factors on the adoption of artificial intelligence-based smart homes. So you can clearly see that uh, most of our hypotheses are, are confirmed. So we can see that actually in line with UTIUT effort expectancy impacts performance expectancy very positively and significantly. Performance expectancy impacts variable intention of usage highly positively and significantly. You can see that subjective well-being in line with our hypothesis impacts positively behavioral intention to use smart homes. You can see that performance expectancy impacts subjective well-being highly positively and highly significantly. Uh, so at the 001 level, um, trust positively and highly significantly impact subjective well-being and subsequently behavioral intention uh, to use. You can see in line with our hypothesis that privacy concerns negatively impact uh, trust highly significantly. And you can see that technology security also highly significantly and positively impact technology trust. So we confirm all our hypotheses. You can also see our control variables as you that very few are significant, but you can see actually, then we compare our results by country and we see actually uh, that so privacy concerns are high, are negative in all the three countries. And so the, the link on of privacy concerns on, of tr on trust is negative but only significant in Germany and France and highly significant in Germany and highly negative in Germany. And this shows that by decreasing order, Germany, the impact of privacy concerns on trust is most negative in Germany, followed by France and not significant in China. And we can also see that also the uh, impact on trust on well-being is highly significant and higher in Western civilizations, France and Germany, than of feminine societies than in masculine societies such as China. And we find that uh, performance expectancy on uh, behavioral intention of use is only significant in France and Germany. And we can see that, yeah, as we expect, 
the impact of ex effort expectancy on, on perceived performance expectancy is higher in China, uh, in countries which are lower technology oriented than in countries which are higher technology oriented. Uh, so and here are the results for the acceptance factors from the UTA-UT acceptance model for autonomous vehicles. So you can see the different structural equation, modeling coefficients. Again, in line with literature, we confirm the links coming from the UTAUT literature, the effort expectancy has a positive link on performance expectancy, and performance expectancy has a positive link on behavioral intention of use of autonomous cars. The easier it is to use, the more it brings benefits, and the higher will be also the intention to use it. We see also here the highly significant link between well being and behavioral intention of use in line with our hypothesis and in line with literature. We see that social recognition is not significant. There do not seem to be valorizations through social recognition, but social recognition increases well being. So that's an important point. We also see that perceived hedonism increases also performance expectancy, uh, namely the benefits perceived. Perceived hedonism increases well-being, so highly positive and significant. Trust increases well-being in line with literature. Trust increases behavior intention to use. And we see also in line privacy concerns decrease trust and technology security increases. Uh, we confirm so most of all our links are also confirmed and, and shown in the literature. And here is again the study about the acceptance of chatbots. Here's the study about the acceptance of chatbots. So we test different service quality factors and utility factors uh, of the UTA-UT technology acceptance model on the intention to use. In line with literature, tangibility influences positively perceived usefulness, uh, but also perceived ease of use. We don't confirm the impact of competence on perceived usefulness, probably because we consider that a chatbot should be competent, simply not not conceivable that a chatbot is not competent. We see that the reliability is also highly significant and uh, highly positive. We don't confirm the links between responsiveness and empathy on perceived usefulness and empathy on trust. But we confirm the link, positive link between credibility and trust, which is highly significant, and highly positive. We don't confirm this time in contrast to literature, the link between perceived ease of use and perceived usefulness, which is the link actually from the Davis, basic Davis TAM model. We confirm a link between perceived usefulness on intention to reuse the chatbot, but reject the links between perceived ease of use on intention to reuse and trust on intention to reuse. Here is example four with the results about the impact of IoT sleeping apps on well-being before and after usage. Here are the results. So you can see that actually before, after, and in black it's before, after it's perceived ease of use has a positive significant impact, which even increases after usage on perceived usefulness. Benefits perceived increase after usage. Second, we have no impact on of perceived ease of use on intention of use, neither before and neither after the usage. Perceived usefulness have a signal, highly significant impact on intention to use before. It decreases after, so which might, might be related to the fact that people are dissatisfied and that actually the sleeping act does not really bring them benefits. And you see the same also for, for well-being, perceived use, the benefits have higher uh, regression coefficient before than after use. Uh, which also appear to, uh, to indicate that the, the well-being does not really increase after using uh, the sleeping app. And as we do find it also for, uh, for the link intention to use on real use, which decreases also, which is still significant. Uh, so there's an impact of intention on use to, and, and real use on well-being, but this influence decreases by usage, which is not a good news for, for this application, which means that yeah, after one week, they perceived no use in this sleeping app. Concerning the privacy concerns, people with higher privacy concerns have higher feelings of well-being. So this is in contrast result to what we expect. And here is our example six and last example about our study about 
big data management and firm and customer relationship management performance. Here are the results. And you can see here the outcome of our regression analysis. So all three dimensions of big data resources have a significant impact on marketing capabilities. We, that's the part hypothesis one. And so we can see uh, it's a highly significant impact on marketing capabilities. And uh, there's a high uh, significant impact also on farm performance. And so big data resources create definitely uh, a competitive advantage through increasing farm performance. And so we support hypothesis one. Uh, we can see here also that big marketing analytics scales make the strongest contribution to big data resources, followed by technology resources and organizational resources. And so the hidden competence or resource, which is actually yeah, the know-how, how to analyze data, uh, to apply data mining, data, has actually the most important impact. Uh, so this shows that some intangible resources are very difficult to imitate and create the most important competitive advantage. We can furthermore see here that um, marketing capabilities have, is a strong mediator predictor of farm performance. Uh, so we can see here the co uh, regression coefficient 0 0.34 has, has a strong impact on farm performance. And the indirect relationship be between big data resources and farm performance is highly significant, thus supporting H3. And you can see here also uh, again, market turbulence is, is significant. And so in highly turbulent uh, markets, big data management has a more important Im uh, impact on farm performance than in low turbulent markets. You can see competition, technology turbulence, farm size has no impact, huh? so it's not relevant. But you can see also in service farms, big data management is a higher impact on farm performance than in good farms, which is quite uh, understandable because in service farms, per nature, uh, farms have stronger relationships and more contact with customers than in uh, good uh, producing farms. The CRM, uh, and uh, CRM is related to big data management, is more important in service farms. Finally, last question, the moderation. So we can see here actually for farms practicing different differentiation, the regression coefficient is higher than in farms practicing cost reduction. So we validate our hypothesis is that the farm strategy moderates the impact. And so in, uh, for farms practicing differentiation, having stronger customer relationships, big data management is more relevant, has a higher impact on farm performance than farms practicing cost reduction. Because again, uh, these farms invest in relationships, invest in personalization, so they take over more advantages from big data management than uh, uh, cost leadership farms. And here to finish, you can see the graphical figure representing the results. So we can, in your results section, either put table, as we have seen, or put a figure like here with the regression coefficients. So in summary, you have seen in the results section, you put the results coming from the statistical analysis, the regression coefficients, structural equation modeling coefficients, significance levels. You can do that by showing a graphical result as we have just seen, a figure, or by putting tables with the coefficients and information. You do not comment, you just describe your results according to your hypothesis, just uh, show if you accept or if you reject your hypothesis formulated in your conceptual models. The discussion of the, about the results and the interpretation in line with the literature will be done in the section discussion of the results. This is what we will see in the next section where we will see how you discuss the results in line with literature you have read, in line with the literature review, and this points out again the importance of the literature review which you have done. Thank you.